custard are a match made in heaven. So I thought this week we could make a rhubarb and custard trifle. I've got a glut of rhubarb at the moment. I love being able to go up to the garden and pick it. So I have picked this for us and I thought we would make it into something really, really delicious. I've got all the children at home, so <laughs> forgive, there might be some background noises going on and I thought that we would have, have a trifle treat. So I'm gonna trim off, cut off the leaves, throw them away and wash my rhubarb and trim it up first. My rhubarb is chopped and washed and I am just going to zest, in fact, I'm not, I'm gonna pop my rhubarb straight into my pan and then I am going to zest straight into the pan. Um, zest an orange. And remember when you're zesting, just to keep turning whatever fruit it is that you're zesting so you don't get the pith in there because that is bitter and horrid. But we're just gonna zest the orange and it really adds to the rhubarb flavor. And rather than using water, I'm gonna use the orange juice um, to soften our rhubarb and cook that for our trifle because it's just as delicious. And if you want to add a liqueur, which you know you can, why not? It's trifle time. Um, Grand Marnier works really, really well with orange and rhubarb. So um, I'm not gonna pop any Grand Marnier in, but um, if you want to, you absolutely can. juice of half of my orange to start with. I don't want to have too much liquid so we'll just start with half. Um, it's probably the equivalent of two to three tablespoons of water if you're using water. I'm just going to pour that over. Now on a gentle heat I'm just going to start that warming and then I'm actually going to pop it into my olga probably for about 20 minutes until the rhubarb has started to soften. Star anise works really well with rhubarb so I'm just going to add in a couple of those into there. It's just warming through perfectly so I'm actually going to pop it into my simmering oven now and leave it while we get on and make the custard. Making egg custard is much easier than you would think and so delicious. So we are using corn flour, four egg yolks from our own hens. Look at that colour. It's just amazing. I'm going to tip those in to start with. A hundred and twenty grams of golden caster sugar. I'm going to tip that in, and then two tablespoons of corn flour. and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I'm just going to combine that off the heat together. So you can see that all the corn flour's mixed in with the sugar and we want to make it into a nice smooth paste so there aren't any lumps. Now, in my jug here, I have got 400 ml of milk and 200 ml of double cream. And I'm just going to take up the rest of that egg yolk from my bowl and just mix that through into there. Now, I'm going to take this over to the heat, but I'm very, very gradually going to mix in the cream and milk mixture on a low heat. We don't want this to burn and we want that sugar to, um, to totally dissolve. I've got my egg, sugar, corn flour mix here on a low heat and I want all of that sugar to totally dissolve on a low heat first. And so I'm just using my whisk and getting that just 
heated through a little bit. And then I've got my jug here with my milk and cream and we'll just slowly and gradually add it in. I think the secret with custard is to keep whisking and to keep a really close eye on it. Otherwise we're going to form lumps and it could burn and it could go over. So you want to stay close by with the whisk in your hand pretty much the entire time. I'm going to add in a little bit more of my milk and cream and then just keep on whisking. I have added all of my milk and cream and now I'm going to increase the temperature slowly. <laughs> and just keep a really, really close eye. I want it to thicken and the corn flour will thicken it, but I don't want it to burn on the bottom and I don't want it to boil over. I want to get it till it's almost at boiling point, but not quite. And as you can start to feel it thicken, you know that you have reached the right point. And so that is getting a lovely, lovely thick consistency. So it is time to take it off the heat and pop it to one side. And our custard is done. And if you just keep a really watchful eye on it, it will be perfect. If you answer the door, if you answer the telephone, if you get distracted, it can ruin really, really quickly. Now, I am just going to pop that in my sink to stop it forming a skin. And for my trifle, I don't want a skin on it uh, at this stage. So I'm just going to pop some cling film over the top and that will stop it forming a skin. I'm not touching the custard with my cling film, but I'm just popping it over the top like so. And I'm gonna leave that to one side to cool while we start preparing the other bits. So check our rhubarb. That is looking very good. And I should just put a knife in. I think it could probably do with 10 more minutes. If you pop a knife in and it's still quite hard, you know it needs longer. If um, your knife goes in and it's soft, then you know that you're ready. The knife test is always handy. So I'm gonna pop that back in a little longer. Now I had to cheat and buy trifle sponges because Lola ate the rest of the Victoria sandwich cake that we were going to use. For our trifle, she is very, very naughty. So trifle sponges will work just as well and I'm just gonna lie them over the bottom. I like things to be completely homemade, but hey ho, sometimes when you've got a greedy Labrador and you're running out of time, you have to cheat. So I've put the trifle sponge across the bottom of my bowl. This glass bowl was a wedding present and I love getting it out and using it. And it reminds me of my godmother who gave it to us on our wedding day quite a few years ago now. While I'm waiting for the custard to cool and the rhubarb to soften a little bit more, we are going to prepare our decorations for the top. And I'm going to use a few pistachio nuts because I love Oh, I can open my jar. I love the pop of green that you get from chopped pistachio nuts. I have this nifty little chopper from OXO and it really is um, a handy one. I'm just gonna put a handful of nuts into there and then just press them. I want them to be quite finely chopped more of a dusting than a big hunk of the nut. So we'll just keep pressing. There, our nuts are done. We can pop those to one side. 
back in with the knife test and that is looking and smelling so, so good. I'm going to take the star anise out because they have done their job now and just stir that through. I don't want the rhubarb to break up too much. I want to keep it um, in whole pieces. There's some that's gone a little bit softer, but I want it to be just a lovely mixture of softened rhubarb, but still just in its formed pieces. Look at that amazing colour. So good. And it smells amazing. Now, I haven't added any extra sugar to it because there's enough sweetness from the trifle sponges and the custard. And using the orange also sweetens the rhubarb so it's not too tart. And I'm just going to keep a little bit of the rhubarb back to decorate the top. Pop a few of those pieces a bit greener in there. And I'm going to keep that little bit back from the top. Now, so, so delicious and yummy. Look at that. Let's do a few of those juices on. To take the cling film off and pour our custard over the top. So, so scrummy. I have a real weakness for custard. Now I'm gonna leave that to one side while we whisk our double cream. That's gonna go on the top. Now every trifle needs a layer of whipped cream on the top. So I'm just gonna pour my cream into my camera bowl and we will whip it up. Now be careful when you're whipping double cream because if you over whip it, you'll start making butter. So you just want to make sure that you don't over whip it by keeping a close eye on it. As soon as you start to see your whisk leave a trail in the double cream, you know that you are almost there. This is probably 30 seconds off being ready. about 25 30 seconds and I think we are pretty much there just a tiny tiny bit more but slowly slowly otherwise it will go too far and voila we are done that is how you want your double cream. Here we are. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So I'm just going to put a layer of double cream on the top. There we are, our cream layer on the top. Now it's time to decorate it and I'm going to use some of my chopped pistachio nuts. I'm just going to sprinkle some of those over the top. I just think the green of the pistachio nuts looks so pretty on the top. And then I've saved this little bit of rhubarb to decorate. Now this is really lovely early forced rhubarb. So it really has held its colour but don't worry if it goes slightly kind of sludge-like in colour when you're cooking it because later in the season the sort of greener browner it can become. You can always freeze some forced rhubarb. It's lovely and early um, you know, February, beginning of March time and I just love the bright pink colour that you get and it looks so pretty. 
and there we are my rhubarb and custard trifle utterly delicious and we can't wait to dive in and taste it i will make sure that the recipe is linked down below so you can print it off and keep it and even if you just want to know how to make egg custard it is in the recipe as well so you can just save it for that bit if you don't want to make the whole trifle and also i love rhubarb compote on my granola for breakfast with some greek yogurt and that i do in the same way with a little bit of orange and star anise and it's such a delicious way to um, enjoy enjoy your breakfast so hopefully you enjoy that recipe thank you so much for tuning in and i will see you again soon coco's just off for a ride so i'm gonna go and wave her goodbye <laughs>